The good news, it's Joe's birthday. But the bad news, we got to talk about Edwin Diaz. It is an emergency episode of the Mets Pod. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Mets Pod, an emergency episode of the Mets Pod. We got to do a little therapy here. It is a sad, sad day as Edwin Diaz most likely lost for the entire season. And Joe, it's it's your birthday week, man. Like, how does this of all weeks, how does this happen? There is no bigger Edwin Diaz fan on planet Earth than you. And crazy circumstances, I know everybody listening to this has seen it, has heard. Edwin Diaz hurt not while pitching for Team Puerto Rico, but hurt during the celebration after their win against the Dominican Republic. So a frustrating circumstance for all Mets fans right now. A little bit of a scramble of doom of not having Diaz, the most dominant closer in the entire major leagues last year, and figuring out who takes over. There's no replacing Edwin Diaz. Joe, let's bring you right in here. I have to say happy birthday, man. Um, I'm sorry it's in this circumstance. I know you had some pizza, so hopefully it's it's a little bit of a cheer me up. And I promise we're going to get through this thing as all as all of us Mets fans are. The world is a sick place. Like just really timing is. these things out, absolute sick place. But yeah, I mean, just it's it's heartbreaking to see. As obviously we know, I'm how big of a fan I'm. It I am of Edwin Diaz. That aside, just as a Met fan, that's like. You know, I think right now Twitter is probably the wrong place to be. And I kind of emotionally last night just tweeted, ban the WBC. And I maybe only half meant it, but you and I have been joking on the show over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, just get Puerto Rico eliminated. We don't want to see Diaz pitch. We don't want, we don't want to see any of that. And lo and behold, uh, obviously what happened happened. And, you know, it's it's just really tough for the Mets because replacing him is not possible. Uh, I will say that it's a good thing that they signed David Robertson because uh, he was, you know, for whatever it's worth, he was the closer for the Phillies and they were in the World Series. So they have someone that's capable of closing. If they had not signed him and it was Adam Adovino back as the eighth inning guy now becoming the closer, we might be having a bit of a different conversation. Absolutely. Right. There are guys in the bullpen that can handle closing roles. Obviously, David Robertson comes to top of mind because he's done it as recent and high leverage situations as last year. Brooks Raley is somebody that we think can handle high leverage situations. The bottom line is there's no replacing, especially at this moment. Right. This is before the season. Teams aren't looking to trade hot, their high end relievers. When you get to the trade deadline, if you are looking for any glass half full here, and I know that's nearly impossible right now. One of the main things available is closers because teams that aren't contending that have relievers that have been closing games for them, that they're nearing the end of their contract or on expiring deals, or they just think they're too far away, they need to get a return. They put their closers on the trade block. So the Mets are in an odd mold right now, right? They're in keep your head above water. You got to score more runs. The bullpen guy's got to step up, but nobody's going to be Edwin Diaz. And when you get to the ninth inning, there's no lights out scenario where it's going to be striking out the side consistently. The team, everybody has to pick up a little bit of the slack, right? The offense has to be a little bit better. The defense behind this pitching has to be really good. And like you said, Joe, it's not just the elevation, right, of David Robertson, who I think you and I are pretty confident in. It's not the doom and gloom of Robertson having to be the closer. It might be the trickle effect of, Okay, well, now everybody gets bumped up because he was supposed to be the lock as the setup man. And then the guys behind him, when you think of a Brooks Raley or Adovino, well, they might at times have to close games and they might have to pitch high leverage eighth inning roles. The sixth and seventh innings are dire in baseball. And now some of these guys that we've been impressed with in spring training will be thrust into significant roles immediately. Yeah, I mean, you look at John Curtis and even Sam Coonrod, who we just talked about a few days ago on the show. He's hurt too. So uh, they're they're losing some of those options on the uh, kind of lower tier of the pen. Bryce Montez de Oak is going to miss some time. So they're going to have to kind of work through that. And I think you are you will probably see them dip their toes in the free agency, I would think. Uh, it's not the most exciting options in the world that are out there. Uh, Zach Britton, I think, is throwing here on Thursday, and the Mets are going to be in, in attendance. Uh, Corey Knable is out there. Ken Giles, Will Harris, guys like that, like, I mean, they're not coming in to close for the Mets, but if you need to upgrade kind of that 
middle relief role. I think you can find some help externally. And look, I mean, like like you said, Connor, there's there is no replacing this guy. Edwin Diaz is not just opinion. He is the best closer in baseball present day. And the Mets will be at without him for the entire season and in a, just a, a real unfortunate way for this to to fall apart, literally for him, uh, literally and figuratively, I guess. But just when you think about it and you think about everything with the World Baseball Classic. And like I said, just a couple minutes ago, I tweeted, ban the WBC. And I understand the players absolutely love doing it and they take a lot of pride in it, especially outside of the United States. like. Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Japan. It's very popular. So I completely understand the players' desire to partake. But at the same time, I think I think it's just two sides. So it's almost turned into like politics to a degree where it's just like you're either here or you're here. Like it feels like the way it is on Twitter and everywhere else that you could read and listen to about sports, it's either people hate the World Baseball Classic, has to go away, or the other side is people like you're being ignorant about the World Baseball Classic. And the reality is, I'm a Mets fan. You're a Mets fan. The You're reason right. we are doing this, the reason we are doing this show is because we are Mets fans and we had the passion to start a project before this that kind of became the Mets pod that you're listening to now. So I think Mets fans is, have every right to be pissed about the World Baseball Classic and pissed about Edwin Diaz, their closer, one of the stars of this team. He got $100 million. He brings everything on the field, in the locker room, charisma, like merchandise. Like they they have an Edwin Diaz bobblehead this year. All this stuff, like it's it's a significant loss that they simply cannot replace. And you can't just sit here and just blindly be like, it's the World Baseball Classic's fault. I understand that, but the reality is, he had a season-ending injury wearing a uniform that was not the New York Mets uniform. And for that, Mets fans, in my opinion have every right to be unhappy about whatever they want to be unhappy about. And I think everyone else just kind of has to deal with it. You're spot on, Joe. I mean, you nailed it. I'm with you all the way. There is emotion in this. You, if you're a Mets fan, you should be upset. And it's not that you're directing that at Edwin Diaz. I haven't seen anybody do that. There's a lot of pride yeah, no. for these guys to play for their country. And that goes from Jeff McNeil to Pete Alonso to the captain of Puerto Rico and Francisco Lindor. Uh, you know, obviously Eduardo Escobar with what Venezuela has done. It's the matter of the structure of the tournament, right? The fact that this is intense games really instantly from spring training. These guys were not in spring training very long. And I know people will counter, he didn't even get hurt while playing. It's the matter that the Mets, who are a World Series contender this year, lost one of their most important players. And it's bad for baseball. The most viral moment, in my opinion, of baseball last year, maybe this is just me and my Mets silo, was Edwin Diaz's entrance. And that reached levels to the non-baseball fan in a sport that, let's be real, we don't always know it because we're Mets fans. This is an amazing market. Uh, the Mets, all the way from their booth to their team to their ownership, are an incredible brand with so much fan presence and power. But baseball as a whole right now, whether it's the Pirates, the Reds, even the Rays, is having a problem to get people into the stadium and grow the sport. And players like Edwin Diaz that are special, that are unique, before he takes the mound and when he takes the mound, are a lifeline for the sport right now. And now Edwin Diaz will not be playing this year because of a tournament that is not Major League Baseball. And I'm with you. I love the WBC. I think the fan atmosphere is basically unmatched at this point. The pride the guys take in playing for their country is amazing. But why is this tournament now? And I'll be honest, I don't have the answer of when the right time to play it is because if Diaz did this in November or January, he would still be missing a large part of this season. But the bottom line is it does raise an important question. Will this be the last one? I don't think so. And will this be addressed? I don't know how they do it. But when we talked to Buck Showalter on this show, you could sense his body language and even what he did with media before he came on this show about the World Baseball Classic. I so felt more uh, nerves about it than excitement about his players going out there. I think Buck's number one thing was everybody better be back and ready to roll and healthy. And let's be real. It started with Brooks Raley, who had to be pulled from Team USA and 
maybe we'll be ready to start the season. We don't have concrete info of that yet. Brandon Nimmo has talked about why he's at spring training and not on Team USA, because his mission is to win a World Series, not win the World Baseball Classic. And once again, it's nothing against Diaz, but this is an incredibly unfortunate circumstance that raises more questions than provides answers. And one thing I saw, and that brings up a good point, you talk about trying to grow the game, and that's the object of the World Baseball Classic, to grow the game of baseball. And to a degree, it is working outside of the United States. I don't think people would, that if you have, um, you know, if your ethnicity is Puerto Rican or Dominican or Japanese, or you are one from one of those countries, you might feel a little different than just, you know, a I guess, typical American that like, they're not, we don't seem as into the world baseball classic as the other countries are. And that's okay. But like, they're, they're trying to grow the game. And one thing I saw on Twitter earlier, I forget which team it was. I, I wish I remember. They asked five players, would you rather win a world baseball classic or a world series? And four out of five said the world baseball classic. So that's me recognizing that the world baseball classic matters to these people. It may not matter Absolutely. as much to me. And that's fine, but it matters to them. But that's also a problem about Major League Baseball, that these players who are Major League Baseball players would rather win a World Baseball Classic than win a World Series where they're getting multi-million dollar paychecks to play to represent their club. So it's just a, a big kind of conundrum. There's no right time to play it. Like I agree. Right now, right now feels like a bad time because it's a ramp up period. But are you taking like a two week break in July or something? And then how does that impact the players that are not a part of the WBC? And does that work for the other countries? If you do it in November or December, that's when players are taking their break after playing nine months of baseball. Yeah, so, they won't. Like, nobody will play yeah, at that point. It What it comes down to is the World Baseball Classic isn't going anywhere. And it's probably going to continue being at this time of the year because it seemingly works for all these countries and everyone. But it stinks that this has happened to the Mets. And, you know, you could go back. Happened to J.J. Putz. Remember when they traded for J.J. Putz to be the setup man for K-Rod? He got hurt in the World Baseball Classic and was never right for the Mets. Seth Lugo, I think, got hurt at the WBC a few years back. So it feels like every four years something's happening to a Met in this tournament. And, um, you know, not that any player is less important or more important than the other. Losing Edwin Diaz feels like probably one of the top four to five things on the team they could not afford to lose. Yeah, there's no way around it. And even we've seen um, Freddie Freeman, you know, dealing with the hamstring situation. And and while people might go like, well, okay, a torn patella is a little different than a, a beat up hamstring. What if that pops up again? Hamstrings re-aggravate as much as any other injury. What if Freddie Freeman is dealing with a hamstring for the first two months of the season? Will other fan bases, notably, of course, the Dodgers, be like, feel the same way as us? So it's not that somebody's right and somebody's wrong because there are incredible things about the world baseball classic but it's the fine balance of if you're a top five player on a world series contender does this start to lead to contracts being structured a different way does this lead to you having to have a conversation like brandon nimmo had with himself saying i He's been very vocal about it. He's like, I have no problem. It seems like with other guys playing in the WBC, but my goal is to win a World Series. So it, it is very, very tricky. And you can see how much that meant to Diaz when he when he closed out that game. And he was looked as great as ever. And as Mets fans, I'm sitting there watching. I had that game on come over watching Team USA. We had to flip the channel because it automatically went to Team USA. And I went, I want to go back and watch Puerto Rico because Diaz is coming in for the ninth. And there's nothing better in baseball as a Mets fan for me than watching him do that. And then, of course, hurt during the celebration is literally the Mets fan's worst nightmare. So the bottom line is this. There are two sides to this. There's no hiding it's a disaster. There's no hiding that it hurts. Um, and there's no hiding that it's going to be tough at times. There's also a side to it that you can't sit here and say the season's over. That's utterly ridiculous. This is a loaded roster, a loaded rotation, a veteran roster with a veteran manager uh, and a staff that I believe will know how to tiptoe the right way of utilizing what they have at the bullpen. You keep your head above water until you get closer to the trade deadline and you be aggressive at the trade deadline to pull the trigger on an impact closer that can get you to the end of the year. And I'll say this, and this is a 1%, right? I'll put that out there and, and maybe some people don't like being this hopeful, but I'll say it. 
I cover football full time for a living. I can't remember a surgery this significant being done within 24 hours. Diaz had the surgery in less than 24 hours from the moment he got hurt. I know the timeline is six to eight months. I'm just saying, even if it's at 1%, maybe there is a world where Edwin Diaz has a recovery that we see him in the middle of October. You never know. And it's a long shot. I understand I'm putting it at 1%, but the fact there was urgency to have that surgery tells me that they're going, okay, maybe 98, 99% chance he's done for the year, even if we made it to the World Series. But if we do this now, there's a glimmer of hope. And I believe in Edwin Diaz in terms of being able to rehab as well as anybody else. He will put in that time. will put in that work, the competitor that he is. And when he's back on the mound, I think he'll be ready to roll. I, I'm not going to hold out any hope. Like you said, maybe 1%. I'm, you don't expect he, it. To me, yeah, you don't expect it. But Edwin Diaz, like you said, is a he's going to bang this rehab as good as you know, possible. I don't know why I used the word bang. I could have used probably a better word, but we're just keeping it. Uh, but when I think about it, obviously for, for those that don't really know much about the injury that had, cause we kind of just glazed over it. Uh, basically the patella tendon is kind of what holds your kneecap where it is. So it's very if you, serious. Yeah. if you tear, if you tear that, your knee could really go anywhere. It could go like I've seen it. It's much more common in football and I've read it in like football injuries there's been times where a guy's kneecap ended up on like the back of his leg and one punctured his thigh muscle. Like it literally could go anywhere. And so it's very significant, way different than a torn ACL or anything like that. Um, but hopefully he's okay going forward. Cause that's now the question that we can't answer for a very long time. Cause if, like you said, if it's the 99% result of Edwin Diaz not pitching at all this year, we're going to be going into next spring training saying, how is this guy going to be coming off this significant injury? Very importantly, on his push off leg. And that's where, I mean, you you watch Edwin Diaz pitch. He puts all that weight on his back leg before, you know, coming forward. So you hope long term he's OK, but short term. It's a disaster for the Mets. There's nothing they could really do other than, like you said, Connor try to keep their heads above water hope david robertson can pitch like he did in 2022 because at the end of the day he's also an older pitcher too so you hope the regression isn't starting now but if it's not david robertson should be competent enough to get them to the trade deadline and then like you said maybe the pirates fall out and david bednar becomes available or you know maybe the reds will trade alexis diaz maybe maybe they feel bad for the mets and they're just going to give alexis diaz to him to make a to make everyone feel better. But yeah, I think for now it's maybe they sign Zach Britton, maybe they sign Ken yeah. Giles or someone like that to, to fill a middle relief role. And it's next man up. That's it's the harsh reality of sports. Everyone's getting paid some more than others. I mean, David Robertson's making $10 million. So you're getting paid time to step up and uh, yeah, just really unfortunate. And, you know, a big, a big loss and a, big conversation about the WBC that I think we'll probably be having for the next four years on and off until the next one. So we've talked through a lot of the scenarios. Like we said, Britain's out there. If you want to get him, you're not signing him to be your closer, but can he handle a sixth or seventh inning role? Robertson gets elevated. There's going to be higher leverage roles for Adovino and Rayleigh. Um, but let me throw this last one at you, Joe, before we close, because I know the Mets fan is really leaving no stone unturned right now. Do you think there's any world where Tyler McGill is viewed as a reliever now because we haven't seen him be able to stay healthy as a starter. He's been more effective in limited inning situations. We don't know if it's going to be him or Peterson taking over for Quintana. And I guess I'll close out the last part of this question is, is that just entirely off the table because of the Quintana injury? They need the pitching depth in McGill for the front, for the, uh, for the starting rotation. And he's not a luxury they can afford to try out in the bullpen. That would be my guess right now that right now they know they're getting short on starting pitching. And despite how big of a loss Edwin Diaz is, finding people to pitch in the bullpen tends to be a little easier than people to come and try to give you five to six innings. So I think keeping Tyler McGill stretched out in AAA Syracuse is probably the best idea. Uh, but you kind of see how the ebbs and the flows of the season go. I mean, there could be 
more injuries or more things that happen that kind of force your hand that McGill has to come up and pitch in the bullpen. And maybe that's something that he would do, you know, certainly towards the end of the season. But I wouldn't be making any change with McGill uh, for now. I would just keep him in as a starter. I feel like this is the name we've talked about the most during spring training besides uh, Brett Beatty and Ronnie Mauricio. But when you look at John Curtis, I mean, how important can that signing become now? This is somebody that's had a really good spring. And it went from, hey, can he make the team to, hey, he might make the back end of the bullpen to now, Joe. I mean, let's be real. You look at him and Drew Smith. Those dudes matter a lot right now. Huge. And, you know, he's going to be competing with Drew Smith because uh, Drew's given up a couple home runs in spring. He looks fine, but um, Curtis has basically not been touched. I think he has the highest swing strike percentage in in the sport so far this spring. So he looks ready to go and he's going to be pushing Drew Smith for that, you know, third righty out of the pen after Robertson and out of, you know, so they're going to need all of them. They're going to need all of them. And John yeah. Curtis is a guy that they're going to badly need from day one now. Yeah, they're going to be a matchup space bullpen, right? Which not saying that they weren't before this, but Edwin Diaz comes in to the ninth inning and slams the door. And it doesn't matter who the hell is coming up. And for this Mets team now, I think they're going to have to, it puts a little pressure on the coaching staff, on the analytics department to be so matchup spaced um, with the relievers that they have where, you know, hey, maybe the meat of the order is is batting in the eighth and Robertson's still going to be the eighth inning guy. And then you move to the other guys in the ninth. There's there's a lot of conversation to be had here. We wanted to get on, do a little therapy session, react to the injury, because number one, I mean, there's no way not to. It's such a it does matter so much. And Joe, I know it wasn't the birthday present you want, so I'm sorry that it had to be this way. But um, closing thoughts as we we head into next week. Just hope the best for Diaz here. I mean, obviously getting the surgery here on Thursday. So hopefully, you know, it's a it's a smooth and as speedy a recovery as possible for something like this. And uh, let's just get through the World Baseball Classic, get these guys back. Uh, I I wish they would just send Lindor home now and just send him back to St. Lucie and wrap him in bubble wrap for the next couple of weeks because uh, Mets can ill afford anything else here. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a big conversation that is been all over Twitter for, you know, the last 12, 17 hours, whatever, that everyone has their opinions on this. And the reality is, if you're a Mets fan, feel free to be unhappy, feel free to be disappointed. Um, but don't give up on the season. Because if you think Edwin Diaz, and this is coming from the number one Edwin Diaz guy that exists, if you think Ed, not having Edwin Diaz means the Mets don't have a chance to win, then you just probably didn't really believe in the whole team uh, to begin with. So it's a massive loss, one they cannot replace, but they're going to have to find a way to tread water in the bullpen, make it work for as long as they can until they can hopefully trade for some reinforcements in a few months. And like you said, offense step up, starters have to pitch deeper in the games more consistently. Uh, so pressure on everybody. And, you know, we're, we're still going to be here every week talking about everything Mets related and, um, you know, opening day is still a couple of weeks away and I'm, I'm still excited, though it's kind of a little punch to the gut today. Absolutely. I don't think there's a championship team in the history of the sport that doesn't or hasn't faced adversity at some point of the long, long season that is Major League Baseball. So a reminder to everybody, subscribe to the Mets Pod on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. You can watch on SMY's YouTube. You subscribe. You never miss emergency pods. It goes right to your phone or wherever you get your shows. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll talk to you next week.